1962 was undoubtedly a pivotal year for the Beatles. There's this concerted push to get them out of Liverpool, to get them onto radio, onto television. But also, ultimately, the real goal was to get them a recording contract. That's how 1962 began, with a lot of promise, but not yet clear on exactly how it was all going to happen. I'm a professional Beatles historian, and I spent all my days researching the Beatles um, and trying to find out things I, I didn't know yesterday. My visit here to Sotheby's today is a good day for me because I've seen quite a few things that I didn't think I would ever get to see. This is the first management contract between Brian Epstein and the four Beatles, who were then John, George, Paul and Pete from January 1962. This is not quite the Magna Carta, but it's close. Brian Epstein who was the manager of a local record shop, entered their world and offered them the chance of management. He said, I believe you're going to be bigger than Elvis and I would like to help you achieve it. Let me be your manager. So after a very short period of discussion, the Beatles said to Brian, OK, you can manage us. J.W. Lennon, George Harrison, James Paul McCartney and Randolph Peter Best. And that's where Brian Epstein should have signed it, but he didn't sign it. He was a remarkably fair man, Brian. Most managers, especially of a hot property as the Beatles were about to be, would have tried to lock them in and make sure that they couldn't get out. But he, on the contrary, was ensuring that they had a way out if they wanted one. Almost everything in this contract is in their favor. He reduced the upper limit of the commission from 20 to 15% because Paul said, I thought managers only took 15, which was a bit of a bluff, but Brian was willing to give. Well, the Hamburg scene ended up being instrumental in the development of the British rock and roll scene. The Beatles had a history of going to Hamburg. And this predated Brian Epstein's arrival in their lives. Their final three trips to Hamburg were all for the Star Club, the big new venue on the Grosser Freiheit. And these were the first and only Hamburg contracts negotiated for them by Brian Epstein. It's a great opportunity for me to see the originals of these three contracts. I've never seen them before. And to actually look at the clauses of them. Brian was a great stickler for making sure the Beatles were respected wherever they played. And these contracts actually do show you that. This is the magazine that I've been familiar with since my childhood. Here in its raw form, in its moment, this was the one that caught all the, the sales of Beatlemania and was the stuff of bedroom walls all up and down the country. By the time November and December 62 came around, the Beatles had a record out, it was in the charts, and they did not want to go back to Hamburg. Brian pointed out to them that you could get blacklisted, and the Beatles reluctantly agreed that they would go back to Hamburg twice more. On the first of those two occasions in November, the pill was sweetened by the fact that they would be there appearing on the same bill with one of their great, great heroes, Little Richard. The final time, they were particularly frustrated because they had, by this point, made their second single, which was Please Please Me. George Martin, their record producer, had pressed the intercom button at the end of that session and said, congratulations, boys, you've just made your first number one. Hamburg was very much yesterday for the Beatles and, and Please Please Me was the tomorrow and it all happened exactly as they believed it would. All these things were hopes at the beginning of 1962. By the end of 1962 they had all been realised. So 62 was the, the complete turning point for them. 